How do you make members of Opus Day cry? All right, so the scene is summer of, I think 2000, uh, maybe it's in May. Uh, I remember it's pretty warm. And a priest is preaching a meditation uh, to a chapel full of Opus Dei numeraries, celibate members in New York. And I remember that a bunch of the guys were crying, not like bawling, uh, and not everyone, but a few. Uh, it was noticeable, <laughs> you know, guys trying to wipe away tears without, without being seen. Uh, and that, and that priest that somehow hit a nerve, um, and the topic of the meditation was God loves you. Um, I remember it being a really good meditation. Uh, I don't remember the specifics, but that, that was the idea. Uh, God loves you uh, right now as you are uh, with your defects, uh, regardless of any performance. Uh, God loves you. Kind of a basic point of, of the Christian faith. Um, but it somehow touched a raw nerve, uh, for a number of guys. Uh, uh, it did with me. Um, why? I think it has something to do with the culture that members of Opus Dei swim in. And, uh, I'll offer a few observations. Um, when you're in Opus Dei, there's a sense that you always have to do more. Like nothing is ever enough. Things aren't good enough. You aren't good enough. Um, the ideas aren't explicitly stated, uh, but they kind of permeate everything. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard, we have to, or we need to, we need to do this, we have to do this, we need to be more like this, we need to do more of that. Um, when I was in Opus Day, uh, I'd be a wealthy man. Or at least I'd have a few, a few extra hundred bucks. I don't know if I'd be wealthy. Self-love is not encouraged in Opus Dei, to say the least. Uh, Self-love is always confused with a disordered selfishness. It's like the Opus Dei can't distinguish between the two. Um, but if we don't love ourselves in a healthy way, uh, our Lord's command to love our neighbor as ourself really doesn't make any sense. Uh, in Opus Dei, there's also this idea that acknowledgement of what is good in others or giving a genuine compliment when someone does something well, is going to lead to pride. So members of Opus Dei never give acknowledgement and they never receive acknowledgement. There was a guy I knew in Opus Dei who was uh, doing really amazing work uh, for a social service project that the work runs. Uh, but he was kind of getting burned out. And there was a priest in Opus Dei who uh, saw that this guy was getting a little bit burned out. And he uh, sort of came armed with some quotes from John Paul II about uh, the importance and value in acknowledging what is good in other people. And it's sort of life-giving uh, property of, of doing that. And so this priest went to a very senior member of Opus Dei to discuss this guy who was getting burned out. And the priest basically said, hey, this guy's doing amazing stuff. He needs to hear that he's doing amazing stuff. We need to tell him that. Uh, we need to tell him how grateful we are. And, and, and uh, he needs to hear it because he's doing awesome stuff. And the reply was, oh, we can't do that because, because then he might become proud. Um, so that's the culture. I'd say that Josemaria Escrivá's anthropology and understanding of the human person is faulty. Um, I think his ideal human being is a Spanish male uh, from the 1920s who just sort of cowboys the F up and just does it. Uh, in Opus Dei, I'd say a limited range of human emotion is acceptable. Uh, don't feel emotions, don't express emotions. A lot of emphasis on duty. Um, it's interesting, a, a different writer is sort of who studied the way, which is Jose Maria Escrivá's book of aphorisms. 
uh, points out how often this idea of you got to be an angel comes up. Like being human is not okay. It's something you need to overcome. A uh, different article talks about how much Jose Maria Escrivá talks about like being a stone. There's this idea of like of hardness, of toughness. Uh, it comes up repeatedly in the way uh, and in other places. But there's this idea of like, don't be a human being. Don't feel. Just do it. Um, and I'm not advocating wallowing in emotions, uh, but don't stuff them either. So I, I think the culture, the anthropology that drives the culture in Opus Dei is, uh, it's inhuman, frankly, and, and it breaks people. Um, the incidence of depression among numerary members of Opus Dei is very high, and it's always been quite high. Um, <laughs> And Opus Dei has a well-documented history of managing the psychological symptoms and psychiatric symptoms that the lifestyle causes uh, with pharmaceuticals. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but there are some stories of people getting drugged, essentially, uh, by Opus Dei psychiatrists that are just like messed up, unbelievable stuff. Um, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.